Welcome to Automotive World, everyone. I am your host, Vinny Mystery, and tonight we are back in Man Oh Man. We have been having a lot of recall news in the industry. We have been having a lot of recall news on this channel. And man, it's never, it feels like there's never a day without a recall in, in this industry right now. So tonight, we're doing a really, really big deep dive. I mean, this is a really big deep dive video. Sit down, relax. We've got a lot to get through. We're going to use, uh, we'll have the link down in the description. We're going to use Car and Driver's article. Jack Fitzgerald did a great article here um, because we have got pretty much almost 3 million Honda vehicles uh, in jeopardy right now. This is huge. Uh, essentially, nearly, literally nearly 3 million Hondas, like I said, between Honda Accord and CRV, both uh, regular versions of the vehicle being naturally aspirated, not electrified, and then the hybrid versions being electrified are under an investigation or being probed by NHTSA um, for automatic braking systems, which has led to crashes and injuries. We're going to get right into this article. Um, you know, this week here, uh, we've had nearly 30, 1300 complaints. Uh, with out of 1,300 complaints filed to NHTSA over this braking system, 31 resulted in a crash with 58 injuries from 50 incidents. So when you have more injuries than you have incidents, first of all, when you have an incident and an injury, that's never good. But when you have... Well, 58 injuries were reported from 50 incidents. That means in these incidents, you know, we can do some quick math here. There was a few of these incidents that had more than one person in the car. This could be a parent. This could be a small child. This could be a baby. This is not good. The ODI investigations, which covered 2,997,604 vehicles. So... <laughs> Honda is the less than essentially less than three thousand vehicles away. You know, even almost less than twenty seven, twenty five hundred vehicles away from this being a th over three million issue, over three million units. This is an open investigation right now as well. Like I said, this covers models from as early as 2017 uh, and 2018 all the way up to 2022 with some models just being from 2020 to 2022. And like I said, we'll go back here. Um, so Accord, regular Accord sedan is going to be 2018 to 2022. The electrified hybrid version is going to be 2018 to 2022 as well. We do have a bit of a denominator here with the CRV as the regular CRV that was not electrified went from 2017 to 2022 versus where the CRV hybrid that was electrified went from 2020 to 2022. I'm not necessarily sure. I mean, I know we have up here 2018, so I could maybe sort of see if this was somehow 2018, but that is still even if it was. The fact that the CRV hybrid started and was only a two year phase essentially versus this one being a five year phase, that is a bit of a weird denominator, especially as because this one as well was the earliest one. This was even before the Accord, both the regular and the hybridized version. So that is a bit of a denominator there that does stand out and is quite interesting. Um, according to the office, you know, they found the Technology in Honda's collision mitigation braking system, um, you know, they have found some issues in it where it will unexpectedly activate. Um, a lot of brands have had this issue, very well known in this injury, uh, industry known as phantom braking. Um, I've had it only twice on one of my cars. Um, luckily, it did not actually break, but the beep went off. Or it might have been a small tap, but it, it does happen with a lot of these cars. But Honda seems to be having a very serious issue with it. Um, the initial probe was opened February 21st, 2022, uh, following reports of the system activating despite no apparent obstruction in the vehicle's path. It's never, ever a good thing. And that would also lead to rapid vehicle deceleration, which increases the risk of a collision. 
like I said, I've had this happen in my vehicle, and it's not a Honda. This was my VW. I've had it happen twice. Um, both times, it did not actually break, but the way it works on 2018 T1, that autonomous braking, um, you know, it'll give you a sound first if it thinks you have, if you have enough time, it'll just give you the sound, which is really, really like you hear it and then you break. And if you, if it doesn't think that you can break in time, it will break. Um, when it happened to me, uh, the vehicle did not break, but the vehicle sound did come off. It was in a construction zone, tight turn, you know, coming on and off a highway onto the, in, into the ramp. Um, they were doing road work, concrete barrier in front of the vehicle. Um, it was a not moving barrier, obviously, but the system did engage. It didn't break, thank thankfully, but it did happen twice. Um, and I did that the same the next day, actually, when I was taking classes, just to see if it would happen again. And it did, and then after that, it never happened. Um, it, the system, it never braked the car for me, which was really good because there was people behind me. Um, but there are incidents, and this is with all brands, but especially with Honda, we have seen this, these type of phantom braking incidents, which is extremely, extremely scary and obviously has a lot of safety risk to it. Um, on April 15th, NHTSA's ODI, uh, they announced the initial probe, which is an open investigation. It has been upgraded um, according to NHTSA in the documents. Like we said, it's now going to cover nearly 3 million vehicles from model ranges from model years 2017 to 2022. Like I did say, that CRV, how it came out in 2017, that is a bit of an anomaly. I would love to know as to why that vehicle had a recall essentially two to three years earlier, depending on what trims you look at compared to the others. Um, but we do have you know that open recall open investigation odi has received 1294 complaints over that system um and like i said there have been a total of you know we have a total up here 31 crashes 58 injuries um and you know a total of essentially 50 incidents so you know what we can see here is to put this math into perspective we've had 50 in 50 incidents 50 total this is not just like the complaints this is like these incidents something happened this wasn't a complaint like it happened in real life 50 incidents a total of 50 injuries out of those 50 incidents and 31 crashes so when you do the math on that you have 50 incidents you have 58 injuries which means that's more than one person per incident so clearly in those incidents, like I said, there was more than one person in the car. Then when you have 31 crashes, when you do the math on that, it's more than half. It's half of 50 is 25. So this is not, this is not looking good. This is not looking good. Um, NHTSA has, you know, they have it on the information on here, possible defects, suggesting some customers which may have had inadequate understanding of the system's limitations. Um, this recall, what is happening, so they have their engineering teams that are going to come out. Um, they're going to, you know, this is an open investigation right now. They say it can take up to 18 months, which can lead to a recall. This will lead, to, let's be honest, this will lead to a recall. Um, this hasn't led to a recall yet as... Honda and both NHTSA have now upgraded it and now are trying to figure out why this is happening in the system. So this initial probe, obviously this is gonna lead to a recall. Um, this is a bit interesting because the fact that, you know, like I said, we've had, we've seen so many recalls on the channel already. The fact that this is already causing incidents that are causing injuries and crashes. I mean, this is something that you cannot wait 15, 18 months on. This needs to be figured out right away. This is gonna be something that's, you know, with 3 million vehicles. First of all, the fact that you have injuries, crashes, incidents, this is gonna be a lot of money for Honda, just in terms of the investigation, fines, recall, litigation with, you know, the people affected, plaintiffs and things like that. Um, this is, this is really, really interesting news. And like I said, we have seen this before with other autonomous systems, this phantom braking, um, which just, you know, the vehicle will break, whether there's not even anything obstructing the view, whether it's, you know, in front or behind the vehicle. Um, 
but just the fact that you know it's still even though there weren't any 2023 to 2024 models obviously this is going to put a lot of consumers on you know just they're not going to be they're going to be uneased um and consider buying something else other than a honda as this like i said is an open investigation um this being an open investigation this v this this number can very easily increase they are less than 3,000 vehicles away from being 3 million. We might come back tomorrow when we're filming, you know, other stories. We might come back Saturday, and this might be over 3 million. I hope it's not. I really hope it's not. But, you know, this is just... This is just not... It's just it's not good. I mean, when you put the math up, especially, 1,300 complaints, uh, you know... According, you know, according to the report, 31 out of nearly 1,300 complaints filed with NHTSA included a crash. 58 injuries reported from 50 incidents. So, I do, it is going to be a bit interesting. I know I did say the math earlier with the 31 out of 50. Um, obviously, I would assume those 1,300 complaints are part of the 50 incidents, um, but um, we're not necessarily sure on that. But, I mean, even if you put the math together... I mean, you've got 1,300 complaints. That's a lot of complaints for a safety issue when it's affecting 3 million vehicles. I mean, the math-wise, yes, it's probably like less than 1%, but that's a lot of complaints. But then the most important math is here. You've got, you know, 31 included a crash. 58 injuries were reported from 50 incidents. Now, let's be honest. Clearly a crash, 31, cra like a crash is an incident. So even though, yes, they say out of 1,300 complaints, 31 led to crashes, you know, we have, you know, that that is, you can consider that an incident. You could also consider an incident necessarily not being a crash, but it affecting the system um, or just incidents where phantom braking happened and like very similarly how it happened to me. Um, the system may have not break the car or may have done it slightly, but it didn't result to a crash. Um, but when you just add when you look at all these numbers like this you know being an open investigation these are not good numbers this is especially here this is the the biggest thing to me um 58 injuries were reported from 50 incidents um that's just not good you know it's never good to have when you have incidents and injuries have a one-to-one -one ratio um but when you have 58 injuries like i said from 50 incidents that's more than one person uh that means on some of those incidents there was more than one person in the vehicle um and like i said that's just going to make it even harder for honda that's going to make it more expensive recall wise um if those customers decide to seek legal action you know that's just litigation now you're paying another person um this is just not good it's not good at all and you know obviously like i said um we have it here. Um, it has been upgraded to their engineering analysis team to further assess the scope, the frequency, and the potential safety related consequences of in inverted, uh, inverted automatic uh, braking systems um, or phantom braking incidents as we can call them. Um, we don't have a fix right now. Um, this is obviously going to lead to a, you know, a recall um, but we don't have a fix right now as they are trying to determine the fix. Um, when that fix happens, we might have a recall or it might just even be something as serious as maybe, you know, whole system needs to get gutted. We might, you know, we've seen it before uh, with other companies where there's been buybacks, you know. I am I am sure there is going to be a lot of people who are owning the, you know, an Accord or hybrid, or Civic, or I'm um, sorry, a Accord or CRV hybrid and on hybrid that might just be like, hey, I can't trust this car. I want to buy it back and that also can lead to like i said just this being financially really bad for honda usa i wouldn't be surprised i mean if i was one of these customers especially if it happened to me if i had an incident in this car um and it was you know it almost I, I was injured or something lightly injured or even heavily injured i'd be like hey you know i i want my you know injuries and everything paid for buy back the car even if the car made it out and it was, you could potentially obviously make it safe with the recall i i would want it bought back um, so this is going to be a very, very big thing. Um, the biggest numbers, though, like I said, is that we have, you know, almost 3 million vehicles. I mean, we have, you know, 
we have two thousand two million nine hundred ninety seven thousand six hundred and four vehicles split among the Accord and the CRV in both electrified and non electrified versions from model years ranging twenty seventeen all the way up to twenty twenty two. And like I said, the fact that we have thirty one reports out of 1300 complaints followed an HTSA to date 31 included a crash and then 58 injuries were reported from 50 incidents that's just that's that's not good that is not the math that you want to see it's it's not what you want to see um we do know Honda. We do know Honda's system is obviously it's a they use cameras and it's a radar based system. Um, like I said, they're currently you know investigating as to why this is happening, but this is the, this is just not good. As this is an open investigation, they're they're probably going to receive more and more complaints. Um, this is not good. This is really not good. So this was kind of our 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 deep dive here i really just we needed to go over this and talk about it um like i said as there is no recall right now um you know you you can't really take it to a dealer they can't fix the issue because they're trying to determine as to why that issue is happening um more than likely as we see it in the industry nowadays it, it might just be a software thing however this can also very easily be a software thing this could be a hardware thing um, so we don't know when a recall, if you know, if and obviously when a recall comes out, what that recall is going to entail. Is it going to entail new hardware, you know, plus a new software update or some sort of recalibration of what's going to happen here? But Honda is in some serious, serious trouble right now. Um, serious, serious trouble. Um, the math is. It's not good whenever you look at it. You don't want to hear that you have 3 million recalls. You don't want to hear that you have over 12, 1300 complaints. You don't want to hear that you have 31 crashes and you don't want to hear that you have more injuries than you've had incidents with 50 incidents and 58 injuries out of those 50 incidents. So this is not good. Um, but this is going to conclude our deeper dive. This was really more of not only really just talking about the news. This I wanted to give a little bit of my opinion and really just have a conversation about this because um, whether you're a Honda owner or not, obviously this is not good for Honda. This is not good for the industry. If you are a Honda owner as well, you know obviously you may be you know uneased right now. I wouldn't blame you. Um, as soon as we have more information and the recall is announced, well, obviously we'll be reporting on it as we do with other recalls on this channel here. But this this deep dive is really I love doing the deep dives, but I don't like it when it's these type of issues just because, you know, these are safety issues. This is a, a risk and liability issues. People's lives are at stake. Um, and, you know, when you see it's three million vehicles and there's already been crashes and we're all, you know, very close to relatively triple digit injuries, considering how many, you know, units are potentially affected here. Um, it's, you know. As much as I love doing the deep dives, giving my opinion a little bit, and um, really just turning this more into a conversation as if you were here than just kind of reporting and anchoring the news like I usually do, it's, it's always it always sucks to kind of do it when this is the topic. But um, this is going to conclude the video. Um, thank you everyone for joining the deep dive. As we get more news on it, we'll be reporting right on it. Um, thanks for watching everyone.